Okay, question. Does anybody remember this story? It wasn't from all that long ago. This was from February 7th, and it was written in one of Israel's nationalnewswire.com's publications, the Arutz Shiva 7, Iranian general, Israel stealing Iran's clouds. And people laugh at this and think this is all a joke, but I, I have on my desk right here, right now, excuse me, right now, a stack of papers that have shown how long the militaries of the world have wanted to control the weather. Think about it. Controlling the weather. If you can control the weather in an area, the amount of damage you could do would be absolutely incalculable, and you can't necessarily blame it on anybody. Remember this? Remember this? And remember the princess that came out and said that the New World Order people came to visit her and they wanted Japan to sign up, blah, 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 so forth and so on. And when they didn't, suddenly we had Fukushima, which was an earthquake that literally hit the, the heart of the nuclear power plant that was there and then caused an unbelievable tsunami. So thinking that they don't have weapons that can control the weather, I just don't know what to tell you. If you think that every single night the sky should look like this, turquoise and orange and all the colors of the rainbow, and yet there's never a white puffy cloud in the sky anymore, if you think this is natural, then you're just never going to hear it. I've gone over this time and time and time again. I've shown you the links. I've shown you the PDFs. I've shown you the white papers. And I've shown you Harvard University's own website where they're explaining straight up exactly what it is they want to do. And this is one of them. So I'll tell you what. If the United States has the ability to control the weather, which they do. They were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. See, I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion-watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. And that's just one small example, but they've been saying it over and over and over. And the thing is, we've been saying it for so long, they had no other choice except to come out and actually own it. So not only do they own the weather, but they own the weather narrative now. So what am I talking about this for? I happened to subscribe to this channel yesterday, the Israel Daily Newspaper, and I find it strange the way they worded this thing right here. Israel sends earthquake. Stop. Tsunami aid to Indonesia. Now the story goes on to explain how they're sending aid, but they haven't quite done it yet, even though these are Muslim people. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's a funny little story, and I don't mean to be picking on Israel all the time, because I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible. I believe in the Israelites and the apples of God, God's eye. But these people right here are not the people of the Bible. Israeli army officials reported over a thousand Gazan citizens rioting along the northern Gaza-Israel border yesterday. And according to the army spokesperson, the rioters hurled stones and debris at troops along the fence and burnt tires. IDF troops responded with rubber bullets, tear gas, and where necessary, live fire. Gaza officials reported 24 wounded and one dead, a 15-year-old who died of wounds sustained from a tear gas canister which reportedly struck him in the head. This death brings a total toll to around 193 Palestinians killed since March 30th, when the Palestinian March of Return protests began. Aside from massive demonstrations along the fence with Israel demanding the right of Palestinian return, there have been Palestinian bombing attempts, enormous tire fires, Molotov cocktails, destruction of the security fence and infrastructure leading into the Strip, sniper fire killing an Israeli soldier, rocket fire, and near daily incendiary balloons that have destroyed hundreds of acres of forest, nature reserves, and agriculture. Now, before everybody jumps on this, think about the story. Those damn Palestinians, that damn Hamas, well, first of all, these people are protesting because they want to take their land back that Israel forced them off of and then built a fence around it. Imagine if another country came into your neighborhood and pushed you off your land with bulldozers, military tanks, and made-in-America jet fighters, 
Do you think he'd be a little pissed off? And also, when they say that all these different things are happening, think about this. This is just one story, but this happens all the time. Think about how many times that CIA and Mossad agents got caught masquerading as Al-Qaeda, Taliban, etc. Remember the guys that got caught up? Uh, driving around shooting people in Iraq and people thought they were Al-Qaeda and it turned out that they were actually Mossad agents. That's what these people do. So when you see this story, don't think that that's anything different. And the funny thing about this is look who's coming to visit. German Chancellor Angela Merkel arrived in Israel last night beginning her two-day visit with Israeli officials. Arriving in Jerusalem, she and Nathan... Notice she can't help but do her little Illuminati hand signal. And look at her close. Notice the large amount of space between the top of the lip and the bottom of her nose. Who does she look exactly like? Do you remember Time's Man of the Year? Adolf Hitler? Well, notice. Notice. The funny thing is, according to this story, she was supposed to come and visit Netanyahu in Israel earlier, but apparently even Germany had an issue with the way Israel is just steamrolling its neighbors and stealing their land. Imagine that. Netanyahu didn't make any public statements, but they did reportedly hold some talks after dinner at the prime minister's residence. Merkel is joined in her visit by over a dozen different German ministers, and this will make the seventh such government-to-government meeting between Israel and Germany in the last decade. She will not be meeting, however, with Palestinians or visiting Ramallah during her stay. Today, Merkel visited the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial for the third time to... Now notice this. These are the Jews. This is Germany, for all intents and purposes. This is how she honors the Holocaust. Look what she's going to do right now. Notice the broken effigy right here. Watch this. Receive her third honorary degree from an Israeli university. In addition... That's right. That's how you honor the dead, by turning up the flames in this portable stove. You don't think that's strange? You don't think this is... I mean, come on, man. Read between the lines. This is ridiculous. And Merkel and her delegation will meet with President Rivlin and sign a number of international economy deals. According to the Prime Minister's office, such agreements will include declarations of intent look familiar at any rate. So why did Angela come to town? Well, let's hear about it. Declarations of intent for exchanges of information on technology and projects involving AI, cyber defense and nanotechnology, as well as research and development in electrochemistry, oceanography, cancer research, water technologies, and more. Not all is without controversy, however. This meeting was originally meant to be held in May 2017, but was postponed due to Germany's objection to Israeli settlement policies. And apart from regional security issues involving Iran, Russia, and Syria, etc., Merkel is also expected to bring up the planned demolition of Bedouin village Khan al-Amal. The German chancellor already made clear her opposition to the eviction of the Khan al-Amal Bedouin families and will reportedly discuss this issue with Netanyahu today. Imagine that. The people that allegedly carried out the Holocaust of 6 million people, even though the actual census is about 250,000. That's real numbers, but... Don't listen to me. This is the funny thing. This is it. These guys keep talking about the Indonesia tsunami and all the people. The government of Indonesia isn't helping its own people. And Israel plans to send aid. They haven't as of yet. As of this story right now that just came out this morning, they haven't sent aid. But they're going to because they want people to understand that even though these people are Muslims, they still want to help them out. It is amazing the amount of destruction that's been wreaked on these people. Now, check this out. This is from Michael Oren at Dr. Michael Oren. Israel, a world leader in disaster relief, offers medical and rescue to Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim community. And that one has no diplomatic ties with us. So even though they're Muslim and even though they have no diplomatic ties with us, we're going to help them out. We say, but we never actually did. Now, these people are direct next-door neighbors that we keep behind a giant steel wall and keep stealing their land. Well, screw them. We're going to keep burning these bitches down. That's all there is to it. But we will send we will send uh, technology and aid and everything else to these people at some time. Or maybe we never will. It's just better to have a photo up. At any rate, links will be in the description. Richie from Boston. Like, share, subscribe, or don't. I am 